Hey everybody, welcome back to the Cornfield Customs channel. And today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about the Rouster Roadster that's behind me. Um, you guys may have seen it in some of the other videos in the background or some clips of it here and there. But I wanna talk a little bit about it because I've got some exciting news. Um, we took the engine out of this car to put in the gas modified Roadster I've been running at Bonneville and El Mirage. So for the past couple years, this car has been sitting no drivetrain in it, and I've been robbing small parts off of it here and there as need be. Just like you can see, it doesn't have rear wheels. I also took those off to mount land speed tires to it as a backup set for the Roadster. So with that being said, I've missed driving this car. It's a blast. Um, it was awesome when we first built it. So I've decided to do quick and easy and a lot of fun as far as drivetrain. So I'm going to be putting a 5.3 liter LS engine in it with a five speed transmission. So with that coming up, um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are like, great, another project. What does he need another project for? Because it's not like I have plenty to where I'm doing the gas modified Roadster, the Hanchard Special, the Streamliner, the trailer that broke the internet, plus all the client stuff and there's stuff I wanna do the Daytona, and I've got a belly tank project, and the F100. So I've got a lot of projects going on, but that's not gonna stop me. Um, I deal pretty well with having lots of irons and lots of different fires. And especially with this car, it doesn't need much. I mean, it ran and drove. All we did was took the engine transmission out and some small odds and ends parts. I think I took a couple switches and a couple AN lines out of it. So nothing super critical is missing other than the engine and transmission. So I'm gonna give a little bit of the backstory on this car. Um, I don't have a lot of videos when I was building it, so I'm gonna put some pictures and stuff in this, uh, this video about this car. But I'll sit down, kind of talk about it, go over the car, why it was built, how it was built, and the stuff that was on, and then we'll get into waiting on the engine to be built by a buddy of mine that does performance LS stuff. So hopefully you guys will like this build as well as some of the other ones I have going on. But again, I think this one's gonna be pretty much quick and easy, because all I have to do is pretty much stab the LS engine in it, make new motor mounts, maybe some transmission mounts, and put a wiring harness in it. So in the grand scheme of things, relatively easy compared to some of the other projects going on. So let's get to talking about the history of this car. So some of the backstory on the Rouster Roadster is originally I built this car for a client, uh, Mr. Rouster. Uh, he owned an apple orchard down the street that uh, my grandfather worked at, my father worked at, and I worked at. Um, this was all, I think I was 15 when I worked there. So our families go a long way back. So he approached me, I think it was in 2014 or 15, and said, hey, I think it'd be super cool to build a two-seater, indie-styled or indie-inspired roadster for the street. So that's what we have behind us. Uh, it came through, you know, the design, all the way through to completion. So we brought in guys like Joshua Shaw, the Root Brothers, and a handful of other guys to help with some of the design cues and making sure things were on point for the style we wanted. Um, originally, it started out as based on a 63 AJ Watson IndyCar, and I blew the proportions out. Uh, I think it was eight inches wider at the cockpit just to accommodate a second racing bucket, and then scaling the proportions out lengthwise to keep everything somewhat balanced. Um, basing that on a Watson car, as all those proportions kind of slid out, it thinned the overall appearance of the car. So it's kind of a mashup of an Epperly and a Watson Roadster. And that's kind of the style we went with. And it did evolve a little bit over time. Uh, originally it was gonna be fully painted um, instead of left raw aluminum. Um, that kind of changed towards the tail end of the, of the build. Um, but originally, it was uh, powered by the flathead V8 that is now in the modified Roadster that I run uh, at Bonneville and El Mirage, and it had an eight port in injector on it. Um, so we don't run the injector at Bonneville because uh, it was an EFI injector and that's not legal in our class. So it had the flathead and a T5 transmission and we drove it all over the place. Um, Mr. Rouster owned it and loved it and then it was involved in an accident and it actually got totaled. Um, at that point, um, 
it was going to go to salvage, and I ended up buying it back from uh, Mr. Rouster and the insurance agency, and I was just going to make it a fun race car to do nostalgia type events. So after getting it in and repairing everything, I got it back to where it was drivable, and man, I took it all over. It's been, uh, we drove it into downtown Manhattan one night. Um, we took it to Bonneville twice as a commuter, so just to and from the salt. I've done vintage hill climbs with it. Um, I've done some vintage dirt track stuff with it, all when it had the flathead in it. And it was a lot of fun, but with a flathead, you're not getting a ton of power, but the power to weight ratio was pretty awesome. So I'm hoping by putting an LS in it that it'll make that a little bit more sketchy, which can also be fun as long as I don't drive outside of my skill, uh, skill level. So back to kind of what we were talking about with the design, it started out with just taking the AJ Watson style ladder frame and uh, took an original blueprint and scaled everything out to the wheelbase I wanted and kind of the height I wanted and just kind of blew everything out and designed it on the, f on the fabrication table. All tube chassis, very similar to how the Watson was. Uh, it has torsion bar in the front, torsion bar in the back. It has a winner's quick change rear end in it. And there's some modern parts on it that are easier to get versus running the race car stuff that can either be really expensive, not very streetable, or just kind of tough to come by. So, you know, we used a lot of newer parts that had the vintage style. Uh, Joe Kerr Fabrication made me a steering box that had a better street ratio for steering versus like a Schroeder, which was gonna be nice and quick. Um, so we wanted it very streetable. Um, and it's just a super neat car, super fun car. And like I said, we've had it all over the place. Um, we even, we raced it on the beach and I'm sure there's plenty of other stuff that I'm forgetting, but man, we took it all over the place. A bunch of people have had fun with this car and I'm really excited to get it back on the road. So that's kind of the reasoning with the LS package. Um, I've had a bunch of different ideas ever since I pulled the flathead. I thought about doing like a Jimmy 302 inline six cylinder, dry sumping it, laying it over on its side and making it similar to like a layover offy, but you're talking about a lot of money. Um, you know, just in buying a Jimmy 302 and the parts, plus converting it to dry sump, all the pumps, then I'm gonna run an injector. You know, you're, you're getting to the $15,000 range, if not more, and then from there, I'm like, well, we could do something more unique with a Mercruiser boat motor and putting a Boss 429 head on it, and then it, you know, also laying it over, and then it would be a four cylinder, similar to an Offy. But again, then you're talking 12 to 15 grand in building that engine, and this car is more of a street car. It's just a fun car to beat on. I don't take it to shows. I don't take the hood off of it. I mean, it's still, it's been apart for two years. There's still sand in it, there's still dirt in it, and I'm sure there's even still salt in it from where I never fully cleaned it after doing some of these events. So, you know, it's not like, first thing in my mind is let's LS swap it. You know, I've actually put some thought into different drivetrain options and kind of what I want to do, but for the best bang for your buck, especially when it comes to power, sound, reliability, and just having fun, I really think a 5.3 LS is a good solid way to go. Some of you guys really might not agree with that, and that's okay. But you have to remember, it's my car, and if you don't like it, you should have bought it when I had it for sale. So, you know, it kind of is what it is. And I'm going to continue to move forward with this LS uh, theory, and you never know. A couple years down the road, I might not like it, and I want to switch it out. That's the good thing about kind of what I do is... If I get bored with it and I don't like the engine anymore, I'll just swap it out and put something else in it. You know, I've, I made this chassis very modular, um, and you'll see that in some of the pictures, and as the build kind of progresses forward, you can see some of that, that everything is nice and open. I built a bolt-in rail system so we could change engines, because when I built it for Mr. Rouster, we didn't know if the flathead was gonna stay in there forever, if he was gonna come across an offy, I just don't like to build myself into a corner. So I leave a lot of stuff open for options and being able to change it. Just like a regular race car. Most race cars are not 
built for just one engine. You know, they kind of leave that open, and as things change, technology changes, classes change, and rules change, you can swap that out to fit what you need. So that's kind of how I built this one. Um, and I learned a lot on building this car. This was for the first full complete car that I worked with some designers, and we kind of completely designed and built from scratch. So there's some stuff I want to change, especially on the firewall some wiring rerouting, some hose rerouting, and just little stuff like that that I wanna change to make it better. So this is a good time to change all that stuff because we're gonna take all the body back off and it won't be a bare frame, but it'll be down to the, the framework so we can get in there and work. So hopefully you guys are excited to see this. I don't know how long it's gonna take, so this, the next video in this series might be four months from now. I don't know. Um, but I thought since I posted that I'm putting an LS in this car and I posted it on Instagram and Facebook and a lot of people are losing their mind about how I'm ruining the car, I figured this would be a really good time to make this video. That way I can get this process started of the build kind of series on this car. So again, hopefully you guys find this project interesting. Uh, some of the history on it, which isn't, you know, doesn't go way back, but you know, it's been together since about 2018, and right now it's currently 2023, almost 2024, so it does have a little bit of history, especially with me, and that's one reason I wanted to buy it back after it was in an accident. So I'm gonna be really excited when the engine comes in, transmission comes in, and we can start putting stuff back together to get the Rouster Roadster back on the road. So. Thanks for checking this video out. I know it's a little bit short, but I think keep it short and sweet until we get this car in the race shop and actually tear it down and go over our initial plan. So stay tuned for the video series. As always, thank you guys so much for checking out this video and all my other videos. And you know, drop down in the comment section, leave me some feedback, let me know what you think. Hopefully not too many people complain that I'm putting an LS in this car but it is what it is. So thanks again for watching and we will catch you guys on the next one.